It would be a tremendous honor for her to, to, to win the third one. I mean, to win one's great, to win two is fantastic, and to win the three it kind of takes it to another level. So I think for her, I think, uh, you know, she's got, she's got a lot of pressure on her shoulders, you know, coming back after ha having won twice. But uh, she always rises to the occasion, um, and she's a competitor. Um, and, you know, I can't coach that. And she's she just born with that. And she always rises to the occasion. Welcome back to Sunday Sports Extra. We have a special guest with us this evening. Allie O, three-time defending national champion in the steeplechase. Allie, first off, thanks so much, as always, for being up here. I look forward to this visit every single year. <laughs> so first off, congratulations. Let's go back to last night in Austin. You, you have a lot of pressure on your shoulders. You, you've won the last two in this event. Heading into the finals last night in the 3K steeplechase, you think about all the pressure, the accolades. No female has ever accomplished this. How much pressure was there on your shoulders? Um, I mean, I think that there there was quite a bit definitely going in, and I felt that. Um, but I also put a lot of pressure on myself. So regardless of whether there was external pressure, I think I would have felt kind of similar just because I wanted to win like for myself and not just because of the significance of three titles in a row or because I'd done it in the past. It was just because I wanted to do it now. You look at video of last night's race. You're racing in Austin, Texas. I believe the high while you were running was like 98 degrees, humidity way up there. How tough, how challenging was that? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely very hot conditions and not really conducive to fast times, which is why I was really surprised that I was able to get a PR. <laughs> like, right? I was I was shocked when I saw the time. I didn't expect that at all. Uh, but I think that just having, you know, the adrenaline of nationals and also taking preventative measures like ice towels and cool fans and pouring water over yourself before the race, like, helped um, handle the heat. You had a post-race interview that sort of went viral I, I, I still am laughing today. I, I, walk me through that when the reporter asked you that question. And was it one of those things where you were just on a high and you answered it as you, you always do, really? Yeah, it was pretty candid in the moment. <laughs> um, my runner's high took over and I lost my filter. I mean, going back and watching the video, I'm kind of simultaneously <laughs> like embarrassed and impressed with myself <laughs> for uh, that comment. <laughs> oh, that was the best. And I loved your tweet, by the way, also. <laughs> what did it say? Summer in Texas? Yeah. Summer in Texas, bro. I love that. That is why she is the best. Allie, you also competed. About 90 minutes after winning your third straight steeple national title in the 5,000 meter race. Before we get to how you did, how does one even fathom doing two races like that 90 minutes apart? I mean, how? describe for someone like myself or a viewer at home, how tough, how daunting, how challenging is that? Yeah, it's definitely a tough double and I think that having the heat and the conditions of Austin they just makes it that much tougher. Uh, but, I mean, I had done it the last couple years and I wanted to try it out again this year. Try it out. Oh. Wow. How, uh, how do you think you performed? Second team All-American in that race as well. Yeah, I, w I wasn't very happy with my result. Uh, you know, coming off of the steeplechase, I really felt like I I had good fitness and I was ready to run a, a really strong 5K, but I think maybe I was dehydrated or something because I just bonked pretty hard in the middle of that race. And at that point, the goal went from trying to perform well to just trying to finish. Oh, who's to blame her? I mean, she just won a national championship in the steeplechase for a third year in a row, about nine, give or take 90 minutes before that. Uh, I'm always curious, for someone like yourself, when you're refueling for that race, what's your go-to? Uh, well, since there's such a short time frame between the races, I don't want to eat anything super substantial. Okay. So I just had uh, a few Cliff gummies. Uh, they just give you some quick glucose to kind of help give you some energy without being heavy in your stomach. You ever had uh, Haribo gummy bears? I, I, uh, I've never had those like between races, <laughs> was, yeah. um, but I, I think that's pretty much the same concept though. These ones just have a few electrolytes in them, but I mean basically the same thing. Basically the same thing. Those are my go-to by the way. Uh, banana? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
just like so, like solid food just sounds <laughs> gross I, at that point, I guess, so I just don't go for the banana. I get you, I get you, I understand. To each their own when, when runners are dealing with food and refueling and recovering. Um, how'd you celebrate? I know last year you went to Dairy Queen. This is a funny story. She told me how she celebrated. Fact is, you didn't really celebrate at all. <laughs> well, so this year, uh, the NCAA tested, drug tested all of the winners of the different events, and then as well as some random people um, just pulled from each event. But anyway, so I had to go to drug testing after awards, and I think I was dehydrated because it took me uh, almost two hours to <laughs> manage to pee in a cup. So <laughs> I didn't get back to the hotel till almost 11, and. And then we left at 6.30 in the morning. So, yeah, our, our main celebration was Panda Express in the Phoenix airport. <laughs> Which is actually a good celebration. Okay, I, I, I kid, I kid. Were you able to see your family much, at least? Yeah, I didn't really see them too much that night, but I got to see them after the race a little bit and at the awards. And then in the days leading up, I got to spend time with them which is nice. Coach Himmels, we heard from him earlier in the show. What's he meant to you and your career at Boise State? I mean, Immels was a huge reason why I came to Boise State. I don't think I would have been here if there was a different head coach mm -hmm. initially. Um, and he's definitely helped me uh, throughout my years here. And like I've grown as an athlete and I think that our coach athlete relationship has definitely changed. And like we've definitely gained more trust in each other and I've started to trust his training more and he started to trust me and following that more and I think that that's a really important dynamic to develop. We throw this phrase around all too often with athletes but truly for Ali the sky is the limit for you and, and you think about where you can be in the future down the road what's next for you? Uh, so I kind of need to discuss that with Coach Immels, but we're thinking of maybe racing a couple races this summer, considering he said he might be able to get me into a Prefontaine Classic wow. and then um, possibly going to USA Championships in the end of July. So we'll see what happens, but yeah. No rest for you in the, the, <laughs> the immediate time. Um, will you get a chance to get back home to Alaska at all, you think? I'm hoping so, yeah. Like, even if I do both of those races, there's a big enough gap between them that I think that I could go home in the middle. Boise State, this university, all that you've accomplished here in Boise, what's this community, Community, what's this university mean to you? Uh, I mean, it's been really special for me to be able to come to Boise and have all the support that I have. Um, like my sister works in a cardiac rehab facility and she says that a ton of her patients come in mm -hmm. and like ask her about me and mm -hmm. they follow sports and they know who I am and that's something really special because I know that track is more of an understated sport and football is huge here so for people to you know take time to you know look into the the less highlighted sports I really appreciate that and I love the support that I feel. Ali, we'll get you out of here on this. I'm always curious because you're one of Jay and I's favorite person to cover, to talk with, because you're so genuine. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, for little girls that you mentioned, that you alluded to, that look up to you, that, that watch track now, that want to be the runner that Ali Ostrander is, mm -hmm. what advice, what would you tell them right now? Uh, I think that the most important advice is just to really nurture your passion for running and to not get obsessive about it. I think that nowadays there's an increased pressure to specialize in sport really early on, yep. but I think it's important for kids to have a well-rounded athletic upbringing and try all sorts of different sports. And you know, if you're gonna end up running in college, that's great, but there's no reason to force yourself to focus on only that from the time that you're in fifth grade on. You know, Enjoy all the other opportunities you have in sport and just maintain that love for running as long as you can. I think that is so true because you played basketball, didn't you, grow up? I did. I played basketball and soccer and I cross country skied. So I did a lot of different stuff. Absolutely. Well, Ali, congratulations. A third consecutive steeplechase national championship that she wins last night in Austin. No female track runner at the NCAA level has ever done that before. History. Ali, as always, congratulations. Thanks for your time. Thank you.